we begin this morning with the ministration of holy baptism. It begins on page 273 in the prayer book. If you will, please stand and face the rear of the church. This child already been baptized or no? No. Dearly beloved, for as much as our Savior Christ saith, none can enter into the kingdom of God, except he be regenerate and born anew of water and of the Holy Ghost. I beseech you to call upon God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his bounteous mercy he will grant to this child that which by nature she cannot have, that she may be baptized with water and the Holy Ghost, and received into Christ's holy church and be made a living member of the same. Let us pray. Almighty and mortal God, for the aid of all who need, the helper of all who flee to thee for succor, the life of those who believe, and the resurrection of the dead, we call upon thee for this child, that she, coming to thy holy baptism, may receive her remission of sin by spiritual regeneration. Receive her, O Lord, as thou hast promised, by thy well-beloved Son, saying, Ask, and ye shall have. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So give now unto us who ask. Let us who seek find. Open the gate unto us who knock, that this child may enjoy the everlasting benediction of thy heavenly washing, and may come to the eternal kingdom which thou hast promised by Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of the gospel written by St. Mark in the 10th chapter at the 13th verse. They brought young children to Christ, that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Receive the salt of wisdom, that it may avail thee to everlasting life. I need to get to her chest. Hi. Oh, how you doing, baby? Receive the cross of Christ in thine heart. We continue on page 276. And now being persuaded of the good will of our Heavenly Father toward this child declared by His Son Jesus Christ, let us faithfully and devoutly give thanks unto Him and say together, Almighty and everlasting God, Heavenly Father, we give Thee humble thanks that Thou hast vouchsafed to call us to the knowledge of Thy grace and faith in Thee. Increase this knowledge and confirm this faith in us evermore. Give thy Holy Spirit to this child that she may be born again and be made an heir of everlasting salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Dearly beloved, ye have brought this child here to be baptized. Ye have prayed that our Lord Jesus Christ would vouchsafe to receive her to release her from sin, to sanctify her with the Holy Ghost, to give her the kingdom of heaven and after last, everlasting life. Dost thou therefore, in the name of this child, renounce the devil and all his works, the vain pomp and glory of the world, with all covetous desires of the same, and the sinful desires of the flesh, so that thou wilt not follow nor be led by them? I renounce them all, and by God's, God's help will I endeavor not to follow nor be led by them. Dost thou believe all the articles of the Christian faith as contained in the Apostles' Creed? I do. Wilt thou be baptized in this faith? That is my desire. Wilt thou then obediently keep God's holy will and commandments, and walk in the same all the days of thy life? I will by God's help. 
having now in the name of this child made these promises, wilt thou also on thy part to take heed that this child learn the creed, the Lord's prayer, and the Ten Commandments, and all other things which a Christian ought to know and believe to his soul's health? I will by God's help. Wilt thou take heed that this child, so soon as sufficiently instructed, be brought to the bishop to be confirmed by him? I will by God's help. Turn over to page 278 for the short prayers. O merciful God, grant that like as Christ died and rose again, so this child may die to sin and rise to newness of life. Amen. Grant that all sinful affections may die in her, that all things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in her. Amen. Grant that she may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. Grant that whosoever is here dedicated to thee by our office and ministry may also be endued with thy heavenly virtues and everlastingly rewarded through thy mercy, O blessed Lord God, who dost live and govern all things, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. For that thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, did shed out of his most precious side both water and blood, and gave commandment to his disciples that they should go teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Regard, we beseech thee the supplications of thy congregation. Sanctify this water to the mystical washing away of sin, and grant that this child, now to be baptized therein, may receive the fullness of thy grace, and ever remain, remain in the number of thy faithful children. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Take the baby. <laughs> Name this child. Winter Dawn Imogene Lynn. Okay. Winter Dawn Imogene, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bad, bad grandpa got it in your eyes. <laughs> you keep holding her. We receive this child into the congregation of Christ's flock and do sign her with the sign of the cross in token that hereafter she shall not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified and manfully to fight under his banner against the sin, the world, and the devil and to continue Christ's faithful soldier and servant unto her life's end. Amen. Amen. Seeing now, dearly beloved brethren, that this child is regenerate and grafted into the body of Christ's church, let us give thanks unto Almighty God for these benefits and with one accord make our prayer unto him that this child may lead the rest of his, her life according to this beginning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We yield thee hearty thanks, most merciful Father, that it hath pleased thee to regenerate this child with thy Holy Spirit, to receive her for thine own child, and to incorporate her into thy holy church. And humbly we beseech thee to grant that she, being dead unto sin, may live unto righteousness, being buried with Christ in his death, may also be partaker of his resurrection, so that finally with the residue of thy holy church, she be, made, she be made an inheritor of thine everlasting kingdom through Christ our Lord, amen. The almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, grant you to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ dwelling in your hearts by faith, ye may be filled with all the fullness of God, amen. amen.
Now it's my turn. <laughs> Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Winter, the latest member of Christ's Holy Church. You may clap now. Hey. Fabulous day, Mom and Dad. Okay, do you want to take that? Go ahead. It's very poofy right here. Yeah. <laughs> Our opening hymn this day is Hymn 158. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the saving health of my people, saith the Lord God. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it is was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I am the saving help of my people, saith the Lord God. Now all the hosts, whatsoever tribulation they shall bring to me, I will surely help. Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, for as much as without thee, we are not able, to, not able to please thee. Mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. written in the fourth chapter of the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the 17th verse. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye, henceforth, walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over, over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not them, the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which are good that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edify, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to the other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Hymn 416. you the continuation of the Holy Gospel according to st. Matthew Glory be to thee, o Lord. Jesus entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city and behold they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed and Jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. 
And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy day. Honestly, it gets no better than baptizing a baby in the church of God. That's just like, it's the, it's, the, it's the ultimate rejoicing. It's, you know, it's the, the angels dancing around the throne of glory in heaven, just absolutely rejoicing that this child has now become a part of the communion of saints. So, that's great. Amen. Would y'all please look happier? Okay, this is a great day. All right, very good. So, uh, anyway, and... Uh, um, Seth and family want to invite you to stick around. And uh, Seth, you've made some barbecue, haven't you? Yes. Yep, Seth's barbecue. Is that mango habanero stuff back there? I didn't have enough red habaneros. Oh. I do have a hot uh, I'm going home. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> anyway, he makes the best mango habanero kind of sauce. It's just. Peach, peach habanero, okay, right, yeah. I'm used because they do buffalo wings with mango habaneros, but, but anyway, but it's delicious, anyway. All right, so, okay, I'm disappointed now, but that's okay. Um, the, uh, just a couple of announcements, um, just to keep things going here. Remember, it's annual stewardship campaign time. Um, we didn't get another um, letter out this past week because Cynthia and I were down in Orlando uh, for the 
uh, for the synods, and we usually do that kind of stuff. So it's kind of hard to mail those things when you don't have anything. So the other letter, the next letter, the second one in the series, will go out this week, and so please look for that. Um, if you uh, if you've already decided what you uh, intend to commit this year, just please use the cards in the pew. That way, we won't even send you a letter and and save the fourteen thousand dollars it costs to mail a letter nowadays. Um, so anyway, but you know, please make note of that and do respond as quickly as you possibly can. Next Sunday, Chili Cook-Off is back, and uh, we always had so much fun with that. If you, uh, if you are interested in cooking for that, um, please see Cynthia afterwards and let her know so we can put you on the, uh, on the schedule, so to speak. And also, uh, Vestry, you will be meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 in the parish hall. Um, one quick thing I want to let you all know is tomorrow, because we've been gone all week, um, and uh, we're, we're gonna take tomorrow off, as far as the office is concerned. If, if you need me or Cynthia, don't worry, just call our cell phones, it'll be perfectly fine. But we're just gonna take a break from being in the office since we were working all last week. And of course, the craft fair and everything that happened yesterday, and thank you to everybody that helped with that and came to that. So, very, very, very busy week. All right, how about the blessing of birthdays and anniversaries? Anyone had one in the past week? No? All right, David, uh, Sermon Hymn 344.
In today's epistle, St. Paul writes, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. The Gospel lesson for today speaks to the liberating power of forgiveness. We hear these words, that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power unto men. You know, many times from this pulpit I've, I've spoken about the miracles of Jesus, just like his parables, are always illustrations of a particular point. And we must think about them and look beneath the surface of the stories to grasp their true significance. Today's story illustrates the crippling power of sin and the healing power of forgiveness to liberate and to heal us. Sin is deceitful, it's insidious. It presents a very fair, attractive face to us. Freedom from commandment, freedom from restriction, the liberty to do what we like, when we like, and as we like. The, this idea of freedom, of course, is very popular in our world today. To the so-called educated modern man, those old rules of right and wrong, those old standards of good and evil, seem to be somewhat intolerable restrictions on what we view as our freedom. You know, perhaps they were necessary in bygone days when people weren't as smart as we were, but of course we are now so mature and we can judge these matters for ourselves as we see fit. We're beyond all that old stuff of good and evil. You know, for us, it's pretty much all about like, it's all alternative lifestyles. We're gonna choose because it feels good. Feels good to us. And evil is that which just kind of cramps our freedom to do whatever the heck we want to. But sadly, that kind of freedom is an illusion. It's an empty shadow, a parody of what we call freedom. It is the exact same as the diabolical temptation in the garden. Ye shall be as God, says the devil, knowing good and evil. Having good and evil within your own judgment, you'll be free of God's commandments. That's Satan's promise. It in many ways is a truant's freedom. But God is no less God and his commandments are no less true. It's all right there at the beginning, the book Genesis. By disobedience, Adam and Eve. They are called from the garden of God's presence. And then what happens after that? One of the most famous things ever happened. Cain kills his brother Abel, murdered him. In fact, Scripture tells us that even nature rises up against man and produces thorns and thistles to make sure that his labor doesn't get done. What had been meant for joy was then turned to sorrow. Our claims to independence and the self-sufficiency of our private judgments actually separate us from God and destroys community. It destroys our fellowship one with another 
It cripples us and spreads a palsy, which means a shaking sickness, spreads it through our lives. And so we turn in upon ourselves and we shrivel up in isolation, doing nothing but flicking through Facebook all day long. See, that's sin's deadly logic, to turn in on yourself. If we only understand that, only understand that deadly logic of sin, can we really understand what true liberty is? The grace of God in Christ Jesus, which forgives us, which restores us to the freedom of obedience and commands us and enables us to forgive one another. To know ourselves forgiven is like rising up from a bed of sickness, sound in body and soul. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thy house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power unto men. They marveled. They glorified God. <coughs> Excuse me. And we too might well marvel and glorify God. For the power of forgiveness is a miraculous and world-transforming power. Our epistle lesson today from the letter to the Ephesians is a wonderful account of that transforming power. St. Paul tells us, do not live in, in vanity, the empty presumption of your own mind, alienated from God in the hardness of your own heart. That's the way of sin. And he tells us, ye have not so learned Christ. You have to put off the old way of life, the old attitude, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We who have been taught by Christ, we who know the meaning of forgiveness, must put off those things which separate us from God and from one another. Paul writes, putting away lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And sometimes, as Paul goes on, he admits that sometimes we're going to be angry. We're going to get ticked off about stuff. But he says, let not the sun go down on your wrath. What he's saying here is don't let that, that, that lurk there, even overnight, because it will fester there and turn your heart to bitterness, and it will become a devil itself within you, distorting perverting your perspective on everything. Make sure that all your work and all your words serve love, love with a capital L, that what you do and what you say will build up and not tear down your fellow believers, your family members, and certainly not the church. Make sure that all your work and all your words minister grace unto your hearers. I mean, if we're really truly honest with ourselves, how much of what we do and say basically is very self-serving and destructive? How much of it actually does arise from bitterness and anger? and then by course ministers no grace to anyone. And how much of it must grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whose is the one who has claimed us for redemption? Paul says this, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. It's a recipe. It's a recipe for a new and a different life. In fact, it is a recipe for a new and different world. And if you pay attention to the news, you know we need that desperately right now. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So how do we go about all this? How do we exercise 
take out those devils of selfishness and wrath and bitterness from our hearts? How do we become renewed in the spirit of our mind? Only by our conscious thankfulness of God's gracious gift to us in Jesus Christ. Nothing is more essential to the Christian spiritual life. Nothing is more spiritually creative than thankful recognition. We can put away bitterness and forgive one another only as we truly understand that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. And that, my friends, is truly liberating knowledge. Nothing is more fundamental than thankful recognition. It should be the cornerstone of our daily prayers, that we give grateful thanks above all for the spiritual mercies of Christ Jesus. We should give grateful thanks for the means of grace and the hope of glory. That phrase right there is in the general thanksgiving in morning and evening prayer that we should be praying every single day. Why don't we take that? If you don't do morning and evening prayer, why not just take that prayer out of the prayer book, the general thanksgiving, and pray it every day? And if you do that, you will truly recognize and be thankful for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And if that thankfulness shapes and rules our hearts, it will also rule our lives. And with the multitude who saw the healing of the palsied man, we too will marvel and glorify God who has given such power unto men. The power of forgiveness given to men and given to us because he has given us the means of grace and the hope of glory. Amen. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, do we ascribe as is most justly due great honor, glory, and majesty, both now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven.